Thanks, Zion. Taylor. Okay, 2 Kings 22. I've talked way too much, and you're like, get to the Bible, Todd. Okay, I'm there. Are you there? 2 Kings 22. Let me pray one more time and just make sure this is God speaking to us. Lord, what a privilege it is for us as a family in this family room and really the digital family room all across the world and we're, we just need a word from you. I mean, if we're really honest, we, we struggle at times with hopelessness in a dark world and we're just asking for a message from heaven, a, ho- a message of hope today. Yes. It's not too late. Would you, would you do something special in our hearts personally? And again, specifically for the person in here or online that has never just went all in with you. <laughs> they're, they're just missing out on such an amazing ride, not easy, but amazing. And not just here on this planet, but on into eternity, forgiven of sin, we pray today, the day of salvation, <laughs> would you do it in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. Well, have we gone too far? Have we gone too far? Have I gone past the point of no return? Is there any hope for our country? Is there any hope for our city? Is there any hope for my family? Is there any hope for my school? You ever thought that to yourself? I don't know how many times recently I've had that question. I've just asked myself the question, when is God judging our country? I mean, you look at, the Bible's been snatched out of school, prayer's been snatched out of school. God's people and his principles started. It's the very foundation in 1770, the foundation of this country Just like God was the foundation of of his people, Israel, when they started. And I'm like, are we just are we just past the point of no return? And if I'm perfectly honest with you, man, there's some times where I'm either driving my car or I'm at a football game, or I'm just out in culture and I'm like, I think, I think we're hosed, man. (laughs) If I'm really on it. I mean, have you been there? I mean, can someone talk to me in church for, like for a second? It's like, it's like I, 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 don't, I mean, should we just pack it up now? I mean, should I just stay in my house and build a bunker and just, there's no hope. It's like sometimes you're like sharing Jesus, you know, and like you're just wanting so, like the best for people. And they're just like me when I was growing up and looking at you like, you are crazy. No, I'm gonna do my thing. And it's just like, we've lost our mind. And then, you know, those of you that like actually watch TV and you're on social media and you're just getting filled with just this chaos and you're losing hope. I think the only answer is revival for this country. And if, if you wanna know my personal opinion, again, I'm not a prophet. I could be off, don't shoot me, don't throw stones at me. I, think, I just think it's a matter of time. I think a revival in our country in my, and it starts with me, by the way. I just point to yourself, like, the, point at everybody else that so the revival needs to start here. But what happens is when it starts here, then it, it, it moves all across this body of Christ and throughout the city and throughout the world. But I personally think that, like, our time is eventually gonna come up. But I think revival can at least kind of pause it for a while. I think it could kick the can down. That's just my personal opinion. And I'm trusting, I'm believing for revival. I got a picture of this just last night. There was, I was at my son's football game, 60,000 people, it was packed, and, and there was no hope. Talk about no hope. <laughs> Couldn't do anything. And there was one revivalist in the student section, and I wanna show you a picture of it. We're gonna try it in church. We've never done this before. We're just gonna send it. And homie started the wave. I need a student. We're gonna start over here. And it was weird. And here's what I noticed. At first, there's only a few people. 
is the student section. There's one crazy student who's like, I'm tired of this. We need revival in this audit, in this. Let's go. And at first, it was funny because at first, it was like, you know, the student, and there was just a few people. But I'm telling you, over time, and the place was rocking, and we had hope for about five minutes. And then, it's <laughs> probably about right. So I thought we would try it. Yeah, I wanted to try the way that church is. Like, okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm picking out a student. I'm looking at you. You, re you ready to start us? Have you done the wave before where you stand up and you just go, ah. Have you done it? No? Yeah, there you go. But that was kind of weak. I mean, I, I, need, I need just, ah. Let's try it again. Go ahead, Luke. Go. Yeah, now that is, that was good. So we got a revivalist in town at church today. So here's what we're going to do. Like, Luke's going to start, and we're going to go all the way across all to the other side. And I need full participation because, again, we have no hope, and we need, we need revival. Y'all ready? All right. All right. You ready? All right. You're, you're the revival. You're Josiah. You're the revivalist, man. It, I mean, the country's gone south. It is gnarly right now, and we need some help. Y'all ready? I'm going to give you a count of three, and then you're going to lead in all these people. You in the back? Y'all ready in the back there, too? It's just going to flow, and revival's going to sweep Love Church, okay? You ready? One, two, three. Come on. <laughs> I am so proud. You want to go the other way? Okay, we'll do it real quick. All right. Hey, how old are you right now? Can you do mine? How old? 78. 78. My 70-year-old, 78-year-old good friend said, we are doing it the other way, all the way from here to there. I like that. Ben, you ready? One, two, three. Come on. Oh, my. Yes. 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 You saw a picture of revival right there. <laughs> Why do I talk about this? Because this is the context. When you read your scriptures this week, you saw it. I mean, Manasseh, for example, I think it's in 2 Kings 20 or 21. Manasseh was like gnarly. He, he was the king for 55 years. Did you guys read it? And at church, Instead of like there being like sacrifices and like an altar to God, he had like this pole of Ashtoreth where they would worship the goddess of fertility. So they'd be like have a strip pole in the middle of church. I'm just being honest. If you, did you read your scriptures? Like that's what it is. And so the, 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 the nation, God's people, turned their back and started serving other gods and the whole place went chaotic for 55 years. Manasseh had a son named Ammon and he only lasted two years. But this little boy, and they assassinated Ammon, Ammon by the way, which is probably a good idea. For that, that dude was just as bad as his dad. But then there was a little boy that was born, and when he was eight years old, his name's Josiah. Everybody say Josiah. Josiah. Uh, Josiah was born. And at eight, he became king. How about that? He became the king of Judah. Anybody have eight-year-olds in here, by the way? <laughs> Can you? <laughs> Your son is the king. Huh? And when he was, I think, 26, something like that, he saw that the temple was in such disrepair. It was so chaotic. He said, hey, we got to go clean this whole thing up. And so he sends some homies to, like, get it on point and pay some carpenters to kind of do a a remodel of the temple. And as they're in there, the priest, Hilkiah, he finds the Bible at church that was lost for over 55 years. 
And I started thinking, I'm like, oh my goodness, that is such a picture of us in the United States. Go to another church and just try to find the Bible. I love my wife, babe. <laughs> let, me, let me rephrase that humbly. There's some of us at church that we just don't have a Bible at all. Is that better? I'm sorry, it's good. And he's like, what in the world? And he starts reading it. And back then, again, and it's the law, it's like the law of Moses, first five books, whatever, and it's a scroll. And he's reading it and going, oh my goodness, we are in trouble. Because remember, the promise was like, you're my people, if you obey my laws and you follow me, dude, you're gonna be blessed. <laughs> but if not, and you start serving other gods, it's gonna go down. Because I'm a just God, I'm a loving God, but I, I gotta do something about it. So they're reading and they're like, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? And little, and little Josiah, who's not so little at this time though, he, the Bible, you'll see it, he, he tears his, his clothes and he's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe we're, we're this messed up. And he sends his guys to Holda and was like, what are we gonna do about it? And Holda's like, you know what? Because your response when you read the scripture was so humble, we're gonna wait until the Babylonians come and you're not gonna see this destruction while you live because of his posture of humility. And you'll see, it. He, he, gets, he gets raw, man. He's, he starts just eliminating people and things and idols. He's like, not on my watch. And, and little Josiah becomes the king who, who is the revivalist. And he's like, no, I no more of this. In, in chapter 23, I wanna, I wanna show you the picture. It's chapter 23, verse 25. Can you pull that up real quick? It's 2 Kings 23 and 25. I, I love it. L listen to what the Bible says about Josiah. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with what? With all. All his heart and soul and strength obeying, what does it say? All the law of Moses. There's never been a king like him since. Someone say all in. That's one of our core values for our leaders. It's all in. All in with Jesus, all in with the heart of the house. It's not halfway in. And here's what happens. People read the Bible and they're like, yeah, I'm all in with that. But that part, it's like Chinese buffet, dude. It's like, I'll take that, but not that. And Josiah's like, no, like I'm all I'm all in. You know, when you come into church and you guys are here there early and you hear the rap video, all in. I'm, that's flame, talking about I'm all in. That's Josiah. And to me, easier said than done, by the way. I don't know about you, but I'm like, all in, except for that. <laughs> but you wanna be a revivalist? And by the way, that's what I'm praying all over this church. All over this church, from young students, revivals in neighborhoods, in schools, in churches, in cities, in countries. And I'm telling you, it's Josiah. And we have a recipe for real revival right here in the scripture. So if you're a note taker, just, I'm gonna give you the points and I'm gonna give you a bonus point. So jot them down. Number one, after they found the scroll, they read it. So read, number one, interesting that this church is all about self-feeding, right? Read your Bible. So number one, read. Number two, repent. I know we don't like to talk about that word in church. Repent, what does repent mean? I'm working, I'm going through life one way and I see, oh my goodness, I'm off. And I have the humility to go, no, right Dan? It's like, dude, how about Dan's story? Like, talk about off, I'm sorry buddy, I'm just, I'm just in love. Walk in this way, I'm off and the Holy Spirit illuminates his eyes and I'm like, I can't believe I've done that. And what'd you do? You repented, what does repent mean? Turn. And look at the legacy you're leading by your decision to turn. It's true. And I honor that, man. I honor humility. He turns. And then number three, eliminate. And you'll see it in Josiah. He starts eliminating all kinds of stuff. But think about this. You had to eliminate, Dan, let me talk. Did you have to eliminate some, some lifestyle decisions and practices in your life so you could actually walk in God's best for your life? A lot of them. I'm all in with Jesus, let's go. But not that, I wanna keep that pet sin right there. 
That was my problem early on. Came to Christ in 1997. I, got, I had a couple pet sins. I'm gonna go all in except for that because that feels kind of good. No. I'm preventing myself from his best. Eliminate. And then my, this is the bonus one. And I love this. This was in chapter 23. I don't know if you, if you saw it, but Josiah brought the, um, the celebration of Passover back into the life of the, of the nation. And so that's what I put for number four. Your bonus, your bonus point is, is celebrate. When you see a culture of revival, that's always centered around celebration of the cross of Jesus Christ and of salvation. If I come into worship or in daily life, I'm driving around in my car and I'm celebrating the day I got saved and the point that, man, the cross and Jesus is the one that saves me, not my good works, and that's happening all the time, the spirit of revival is flowing in my own heart and then through me. I just gave you the whole message. Do you guys wanna go back and like kind of review it? Or you wanna be excused right now? You guys hungry? <laughs> okay. Um, let's start with this idea of read. Okay, it's in uh, verse eight, 2 Kings 22, verse eight. Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, the court secretary, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Then Hilkiah gave the scroll to Shaphan, and what did he do? He, he read it. That's the number one thing that we want for you, just to read your Bible. Isn't it funny, Adam, how like God's growing you right now just in just the simple study of the scripture? Read it. Someone say, read it. Read it. Read it. Verse nine, Shaphan went to the king and he reported, your officials have turned over the money collected at the temple of the Lord to the workers and supervisors at the temple. So we did what you told us to do. Shaphan also told the king, hey, Hilkiah, the priest, he's given me a scroll so Shaphan, what did he do? He read it to the king. He read it to the king. And then 2 Kings 23, verse two, the king, so it's the very next chapter in verse two, 2 Kings 23, verse two, the king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the people of Judah and Jerusalem along with the priests and the prophets, all the people from least to greatest. There the king, what did he do? The king read to them the entire book of the covenant that had been found in the Lord's temple. Real revival, it's gonna require reading. And it sounds so weird, doesn't it? Like a Bible, reading a Bible is gonna do something to me. And to me, it's reading it with the heart. If I read it just with the mind, it becomes just like a book, you know, like, like a scholastic book. But when I'm reading it by the Spirit, a lot of times before we crack open the word in the morning, we'll just pray, God, will you speak to me? By your Spirit, your Scriptures illuminate them. And something happens, man, when you, when you just simply read the Scripture. It's interesting to me that, again, they found it in the church, in the temple. And I started thinking about what is bearing your Bible today? What is burying my Bible today? How did my Bible get dusty? And I don't know about you, I just I thought of a couple for me. I, pretty, I think my number one thing is um, busyness and laziness. You know, and busy, we've talked about this a lot. Busy is a great acronym, burdened under Satan's yoke. And I get, I get busy, and, and I, got, I pray for some of y'all. You keep on talking about kids. You're just popping out kid after kid after kid after kid. Talking about I need to get in the word. Kids, get in the closet. I gotta get in the word. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, and maybe that's, that's just what needs to happen. But it's like, it's like, what in the world? Here's a good one for you. Nehemiah 8.8, 8, I was asking myself, you know, sometimes... Why, why do we do church? Like, why do we have church right here? You know, one of the main components of this, it's so beautiful to come together every week, yeah, to worship God and all this kind of stuff. And, but here, here, listen to what they did. This was from the Bible. This is Nehemiah 8.8. They read, there it is right there. They read from the book of the law of God and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read. Helping the people understand each passage. That's why we're so big on 
we're reading with, and we're just trying to help un you understand the Bible a little bit more, and then your small group leaders, and your, as you discuss it, it's, it's working together, it's explaining the passage and reading through it together. That's when revival starts happening. And I wanted to show you this video because you might be new here to the church, and I wanted to just show you the importance of, there's nothing wrong with a nice building. There's nothing wrong with, how many appreciate the worship leaders in the, in the band and like the sound and all that? Like, it's great. Like, I love it. But at the end of the day, I wanted to show you, this church will always be based in the Bible. So can you just show this video real quick? It's just a minute video. Before we... Um, finished this church, before we built this platform, we wanted to show you what this church will always be, the foundation of this church. So go ahead and roll this video, please. So we give this time to you. We lay this book here just to mark the fact that our desire is to stand on your foundation and your foundation alone, God. So we give you this place. We give you this time. We ask that you would impart your spirit in every crevice of this place, that your love would know no bounds here, that every single person that walked on this place would know you intimately, experience your love, and experience your best for their life. We pray that you would pour out favor on every person that put their hand to work on this place yes. and that you would provide for them in every way, especially a relationship with you. We love you. We give you this time. We give you this building. And may every word that proceeds from this stage literally be based on your foundation, the word of God. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. really good is from time to time people will it'll be like man great m message pastor or that was terrible pastor either way but it's like the beauty that I can say is all I'm trying to do is help you through the Bible and I'm just trying to do it how I am some of y'all are like D does he speak English is he all this like I'm just trying to be free to be who I am and all of our Bible teachers and that's fine personality but the power is right there I'm standing on the power the power of the Spirit, the Word of God. It was actually one of my very first Bibles, and there was um, commentary from Pastor Chuck Smith, who was the first Calvary Chapel pastor out in Southern California, who I had the privilege of studying under for years. He's in heaven, you know, he's in the skybox suites. What's up, Chuck? You know, it's like, <laughs> what I love about it is that's all he did from Genesis to Revelation, just preached through the Word. It's a firm foundation. Read it. Someone say, read it. <laughs> read it. And then after you do, <laughs> you want to be a revivalist? You want to lead a revival? Repent. Repent. Look at the very next verse in 2 Kings 22, verse 11. This is pretty cool. So again, now it's lost for over 50 years. They find it in the church. Hilkiah is like, bro, <laughs> Shaphan brings it back to the king. He reads it. And I'm just picturing the king. I'm the leader of the nation. God's people, the, eventually the Messiah would come through. I'm off, and now this is, in verse 11, when the king heard what was written in the book of the law, what did he do? He tore his clothes in despair. Tore his clothes in despair. And, I, and I'm wondering, here's my question as I was studying this, what's my response when I read the word? specifically when I read it and my life isn't lining up with what God's best is for my life? What is our first response? Is it explain it away? Yeah, but that's for back then. Or, or is it truly like, oh my goodness. It's interesting because the Holy Spirit many times when I'm reading He'll convict me of something. And by the way, there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Condemnation is like from the enemy. Conviction is healthy. It's from the Holy Spirit. He is illuminating something in the scriptures that's not connected to his best for our life. And so what's the response? And I'm guessing the portion he's reading is probably in Deuteronomy. You remember Deuteronomy 28 and that whole section? It's like, it was very clear. If this, this will happen. And there's a whole list of stuff, you remember? 
And then if you don't, then there's a whole nother list of stuff. And I'm picturing him just, Shafin's just reading that, and he's reading in Deuteronomy. It's like the summary statement. And picturing the King Josiah, he wasn't explaining it away. He wasn't making excuses. Well, I was just, you know, he was honest with himself, and he ripped his, his clothing as a sign of humility and response and repentance. And I like that it started with him. You know, I said this just a few minutes ago. True revival, if we're gonna see it in our country, it starts where? It's like Michael Jackson. Starting with the man in the mirror. He, remember? I'm asking him to change his ways. He, and no message could have been any clearer. You wanna make the world the place to look yourself and make that change. Remember that? Remember that? <laughs> but that's what Josiah is doing. He's reading it, but the Bible's actually reading him. Isn't it wild how that happens to you? are reading the Bible. The Bible's reading you. And then there's the response. What am I gonna do about it? Uh, I agree with that, God, but not that part. And what's crazy is then I become God. You see, you see the logic with that? I'm reading it, well, I don't like that part, and so I take God from his throne and I place Todd on the throne. But the tragedy with that is then, then my Bible becomes absolute authority and absolute truth. And the minute we start doing that, it's like taking some, like a little thing out of a sweater, like a strand out of the sweater, the whole sweater evaporates. But when I can go, man, I... I'm off. Forgive me, God. In Galatians 3, Paul alluded to this when he was talking about the law. He said that the law was the tutor or the schoolmaster that led him to Christ. So when it's like a mirror. The other day I was, um, I eat a bowl of cereal, true confession. I'm addicted, to, I'm, an, I'm an addict to uh, Honey Bunches of Oats with Almonds, like before I go to bed. And uh, any fans at all, by the way? <laughs> no? Okay. And I was brushing my teeth, and my wife never told me. I had this, like, crusty white thing on my chin. <laughs> She's like, I probably told him too many times. I'm just not going to tell him anymore. <laughs> what was that? It's a picture, right? I'm reading the law exposes my sin on my chin. And then I have a choice. Ah. Or I'm gonna, should I wipe it off? Like repentance, right, is like I'm, I'm recognizing what it is. I gotta do something about it. And I can go kiss my wife and she doesn't get all weirded out with the crusty milk on my chin, right? So the, are you feeling me at all with that? Like you feel me? I wrote this in my notes, real revival is from real repentance. I'm talking personal. I think we're really good at pointing fingers at politicians and all the other people in our culture that are lost. And listen, there's, there's time and space for that. In fact, the, the revivalists right now that are engaging in Politics from a biblical standpoint with not backing down from the word but doing with humility, I love that. Praise God, by the way, for that. Uh, but to me, it's like the, the real revival starts, starts in the mirror. And it did. And then the conviction led to action. My favorite Bible verse in the entire scripture on revival is 2 Chronicles 7.14. You guys know that? Where are my Christians at? Are you, my revivalists, you've been praying this, this scripture for years. And this was right after Solomon dedicated the temple and God speaks to Solomon. He's like, you know, there's gonna be some times and seasons where I, I block heaven and the rain's not gonna fall and, and the, the blessing's blocked by your disobedience. But when you recognize it, here's what he says. But if, someone say if, if my people, did you see that? My people, he does not say it. if those people, these are God's people, if my people who are called by my name will, what? Humble. 
humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, see that? Turn, repent, turn from, my, from their wicked ways, then what will I do? I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will what? Oh my goodness! I will revive their land. There's another translation that says, I will heal their land. Talk about a sick nation right now. We are on like life support right now. And we're barely surviving as a country. You know what we need? The only thing, in my opinion, that's gonna save us, me personally, collectively, and then as a nation, is right here. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will restore their land. It's it. That is it. It's it. And I'm all for politics. I'm all for policies. I'm all for changing that. Believe me, and I have my hat's off to you guys, but this is the one thing that we are going to see revival sweep the land. And it might start with a student. It might just start with a student who says, not nah, enough, enough of this, and just raises up and says, no, I'm, I'm gonna be like Josiah, and it sweeps the country, and it starts with humility. You ready for number three? Eliminate. <laughs> and there's, you already read this, but I, I might have to just pare this down a bit. Eliminate, just look at, um, well, in 2 Kings 23, I'm just gonna give you some words, okay? Can you, can you throw these on the screen? <laughs> when you read it, did you see what he did? Look at remove, burn, he did away with, he tore down, he destroyed, he smashed, I like that one, he smashed the bits. You know, there's some people, some people in this room right now, you know what you need to do with your iPhone after you leave this place? If you're after a real revival in your heart, smash two bits your iPhone. Count the cost. What is a new iPhone these days? 800 bucks? 800 bucks or your marriage? Or generations? He said, smash it to bits. Smash it, ground it to dust. <laughs> Demolished, executed. And that was pretty raw, man. He, he, he went, there was like male prostitutes in like, in like this little area and he just went and just executed people. Like it just got raw. I know that's like R-rated church weird, and you're like, how did that happen? Like, we're supposed to love people? Yeah, but there was, a, there was a sense of like, we gotta do something about it. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, what did he, what did he, what did he say? I just kind of wave and said. He said, cut that thing off. If your eye causes you to sin, what did he say? Pluck it out, grind it to dust, do something about it. Anybody need to do something about, like you want real revival? If I want real revival, this looks what I wrote. Real revival requires removal. It's it. It's it. And I don't know what it is for you. I, I talked to a young guy. <laughs> he, uh, I said, how you doing? I haven't talked to you for a while. He said, man, I've, I've been going through a season. And he said, I finally broke up with my significant other who, the great person, but they just weren't aligned with fully all in with Jesus, and he said, it's like, it's like a ton of bricks came off my back. He said it was hard, and I wish nothing the best for them, but there was a removal of a relationship that opened up something new for him. I don't know what it is for you. We were in prayer over here, and God gave me a picture of what some people in this church need to do, including myself. There's things in my life I'm working through that I gotta remove too, and we were up praying and I went and looked out the windows and across, right over here, there's an, there's an apartment complex, and you guys know what I'm talking about? And every Wednesday morning, right around 6.15 a.m., 6 a.m., the waste management truck comes and has these huge bins from the apartment complex of all this, this, this trash. And he literally removes the trash and he puts it in the truck and he drives away. And I was thinking about how much, that's like a, such a perfect picture of us. We just need to hire waste management real quick. Just call them in. I got all this junk real quick, can you just take it out? Amen? 
All right, let me give you the last one because we're running out of time and you got to get to your brunch. Celebrate. Someone say celebrate. celebrate. This is so good. In chapter 23, verse 21, King Josiah, after he just eliminates a bunch of stuff, takes action, he issued the order to the people. You must, what? You must celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God as required in this book of the covenant. They, I mean, it's been 50 plus years that they actually celebrated the Passover. Verse 22, there hasn't been a Passover celebration like that since the time when the judges ruled in Israel. Holy smokes. No, throughout all the years of the kings of Israel. So more than that, a couple hundred. But in the 18th year of King Josiah's reign, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. Celebrate. If revival is gonna sweep, that's part of it, right? You, you got, we're reading, we're repenting, we're eliminating, and then we're celebrating. That, that's the other thing I love, because sometimes Christianity is like, I, got, I can't do this, I gotta remove, I gotta remove. Yeah, it's part of it, but we gotta replace it as well. Yeah. Remember the guy that like, he, uh, he was freed from demons, but, and it was swept, but the, nothing else came back in, and then he was in this worse state than he was before? We gotta remove, but then we gotta replace, and part of it's celebration. Yeah. And specifically, watch this, that what, were they, what were they celebrating? The Passover. Now, you Bible scholars, stay with me now. Some of you guys are still learning the Bible. I'll tell you what happened in the Passover. They were stuck in Egypt, God's people, and the night before they left, the, God said, make sure all you guys, I'm gonna send the death angel is gonna take out the firstborn son, so take some, an animal, kill it, and take the blood and put it on the doorposts and the lentils, and it actually looked like a cross, the blood on a cross, that's what's gonna save you. So when the death angel comes, it'll pass over, so now you can be free. And your firstborn won't be killed. You know what that was a, a preface of? That was a picture of? Jesus bleeding on the cross. The Lamb of God, who was slain before the foundation of the world, taking on your sin and my sin. And now, when we're found in Christ, the blood of Christ, pass, the, the death angel passes over us and we're saved. And we celebrate our salvation. We celebrate the cross. Revival is based on celebrating the cross. Amen? Okay, Lord, thanks for this, this great opportunity to dig in. So cool. Little Josiah growing up and saying no more. Thank you for Josiah, and, and I pray for a bunch of other Josiahs all throughout this auditorium, all of our friends online, not backing down anymore, pressing in. Even in the time of darkness, so many lost people making up their own laws and rules and great people, but just misguided and deceived, disconnected from you, walking in darkness. We pray for revelation now. I pray we'd walk in humility, look in the mirror, remove some areas, maybe smash the bits some things that are dragging us down, missing out. And I pray revival would sweep across this nation just like the wave at a football game. Maybe start sporadically, but then over time, everybody's involved. For your glory in Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I wanna conclude with an opportunity of response. And specifically, I'm just gonna ask you a question. Do you wanna be a Josiah? I'm not sure who's in here. Something's been stirred in your heart for a while. Maybe you're a young person and you go, Is it, could, could God really use me to change, literally change the world? There's some other people in here you say, well, you don't know how I grew up. Can I just remind you, Manasseh was Josiah's dad and he was one of the most evil kings in the world. It doesn't matter what you came from. You say, man, I don't, you don't know what I've done, pastor. It doesn't matter what you have done. God can forgive you today and set you on a whole new trajectory of change, bring light, Christ into a dark world. So let's stand together and
want to create space in a moment the band's going to play a song and if God's stirring in your heart you say man I, I, I want to go all in the Bible is very clear God is perfect he's holy he's just but he's also gracious and he says man because of all my people have sinned I'm going to leave heaven come to the planet I'm going to be born of the Virgin Mary, live the perfect life that they couldn't. I'm gonna die in their place and pay for all the sin of mankind, bridging the gap. He was buried in the tomb. Three days later, he rose from the grave, proving who he is. And now he knocks on hearts literally across the world, across the globe. He's like, just come to me, turn from your sin, repent, follow me. I got something way better. I want relationship with you. If you say, man, I, that's what I've been looking for. In a moment, it's, there's gonna be an invitation. The band's gonna play. I'm gonna invite you right here to this front area. And it's gonna be this, this opportunity to go all in, all in with the Lord, connect with him, be forgiven, know you're going to heaven, begin a relationship with him. If you don't absolutely have to go somewhere, I, pr I, I just invite you to pray as a Christian. You're already saved, you're going to heaven, you've already turned from your sin, you know who you are in Christ. Pray for the individual that today's their day. It's the day of salvation, day of forgiveness. Make peace with God. He changes everything. So church, just begin to pray. God speaking to you, you come, you come here. I'll lead you in a prayer. God, I'm all in. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. So church, begin to pray. Band, go ahead and play. something really cool he's reaching out if there's anybody else we're not going to sing any longer if you say man I need to be up with all these amazing people at the front bow my knee make peace with God remember it was Josiah reading he was listening and then his response was humility I love it I, I just sense it right now in, in both of you guys I'll, I'll, everybody across there's humility, there's a posture of humility. Is there anybody else? This is, for, this is for you. This is for you online as well, I love it. This is your moment. I'm gonna just lead you in prayer and ask that you pray out loud after me, but it's your heart connecting with God. So if you're ready, pray this prayer out loud. Say, Lord God, I open up my heart and I invite you inside to be my God, to be my savior, <laughs> to be my friend. Yeah. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me clean. I've decided today to follow you. From this day forward, I'm all in. Make me like Josiah to lead a revival for your glory and to help a ton of people. <laughs> In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Now listen, as you guys might know, I got a couple of friends to my right. Oh my goodness, it's the Matlocks. Two of my best friends. They just want to put a Bible in your hand and continue to pray for you a little bit more. So if you could head that direction. Again, church, let's celebrate with our new brothers and sisters. So cool.